Okay, so finally here, um, these are built to last. Uh, we talked about one-year warranty on this unit. It does have the option for a three-year care pack. Um, those options would include services such like on-site. It does come as more of a, a mail-in return to depot type of a warranty. It is something where HP covers the shipping. So if there ever was an incident in, in the life of that one year and it's under warranty, uh, we would provide a, an empty box to a customer where they, they ship it back into HP. So the problem with that is it's going to take you probably close to a week to get your notebook back. And I know for me a week of downtime is just not at all acceptable. And so I'm the first one usually to wait in line and say, I'll, I'll pay the extra $150 or whatever it is to get that three-year care pack. I think they're usually going to be $90 to $150 to get that, that extra, extra two years of support so that not only if I have an issue in those three years, I also can have a technician from HP come on site to my business, my hotel, my home, wherever, I am, wherever I'm at, uh, and fix my notebook on the spot. So that's definitely a service worth looking at, not only on the folio, but I think any, any PC, whether you buy it from HP or not, um, what services are available. And HP has very deep breadth of services available on our products. Um, also, the folio has, is B, B, T, sorry, BFR and PVC free. It's Energy Star qualified and EP Silver registered in the U.S., uh, also designed for recyclability. Of our notebooks at HP, 90% of our notebooks can be recycled, of the parts can be recycled, which uh, is definitely something that's important that all this isn't ending up in a landfill uh, down the road when we're moving on to better and greater technology. It does have the Dolby Advanced Audio stereo speakers, so if you get that cinematic sound, whether you're listening to your iTunes music or maybe watching a business video or uh, participating in a web conference like this, uh, it gives that ultimate sound quality. Uh, also, the, the dual inline uh, microphone with the ability to use the webcam, which is integrated, uh, so you can do your Skyping or whatever web conference software you use right there off, off of your, uh, your folio without any additional hardware being added to it. Um, and it does have the combo headphone microphone jack. Uh, this does have the 802.11 BGN wireless. It does not have the A frequency, if that's something where, I know sometimes in education or healthcare, that's a little bit more, more of an issue. Uh, but this does have the BGN uh, wireless frequency. And, um, and finally, as I mentioned early, earlier, it does have Intel's wireless display support, which is often called WIDI, which can help you connect to your folio to a projector or to a TV wirelessly. Uh, with, with, within a limited range, which is a great, great thing to go to a hotel and be able to connect right to the, the, the TV and use it as a dual display. Um, so with that, I think I've covered most of the technical specs of the product, a little bit about some of the, the buzz behind this product. Uh, we've talked to how Intel is supporting uh, this product with its i5 processor. I think we talked a little bit here about accessories as well. I think the two, probably the two top sellers that we'll see on this, on this particular notebook is one going to be the, the, the USB external optical drive. We'll also see good support for the docking, uh, the docking USB docking station, which allows you to, to kind of plug and play and keep all of your external monitors and cables and mouse and keyboard uh, connected uh, at the office. It also has that Bluetooth support as well. We're seeing really good adoption on that care pack going to a third year support on the care pack. And um, that's, I think, where we'll see the greatest adoption. We are working on some HP branded bags that are specific for Ultrabooks. Most of the bags today that you buy, you're, an Ultrabook would just flop around in those bags because these are so thin and light. So you'll see more and more designed bags coming out, not only from HP, but from other vendors like a Targus or, or a Solo, where there'll be bags that are, that are customized for a very thin and light notebook. So with that, where does, where does this fit in within our overall portfolio? And really quickly, for those of you who might not be as familiar with HP's business notebook portfolio, I've got the folio over here on your far left, which is the first of our ultra books. We also have minis, which are our smallest, lightest, least expensive notebooks in our portfolio. Uh, this market has been largely cannibalized by, the, by media pads. So where a lot of, especially education, is where we saw a lot of adoption with uh, the Mini, uh, you know, Acer came out very strong for a couple of years. People started thinking that, that Mini Notes were going to overtake notebooks, and that definitely wasn't the case. Um, they've declined quite rapidly in the past two years, but still something we offer, especially for that, that niche market that's looking for something that's ultra cheap, ultra light, small, um, and in some cases even able to connect via wireless WAN to a 3G network. Uh, so next up, up the stack, we have our HP series. So this is really looking at that notebook that's going to be sub um, 600. In many cases, you know, we have promos where we're running these things sub 500 in that $450 price point in a commercial notebook. Um, just a great value price 
for the customer that's looking for the ultimate value with the essential needs of a commercial notebook. Um, this isn't a metal design. It's more, uh, more uh, of a plastic design where when you bump up the stack into our Pro Book, everything becomes metal uh, with our magnesium alloy type finishes. Um, so a uh, step up in ruggability. So as we go from that HP series on, on more of the low end, but still very good seller at HP, we bump into the ProBook S line and the ProBook B line. Uh, so the ProBook S is, has really been the notebook that took HP to the number one uh, notebook seller in the U.S. commercial market in 2011. Uh, that notebook has done very well. For the price point, when you look at a notebook that's really in that $600 price point, has very rich specs, a lot of great ports, um, the ability to go from an i3 to an i7 Intel processor, and even some AMD options in there as well with some of their new Fusion APUs. So the ProBook S has been a hot, a hot uh, notebook for HP. But also the ProBook B is when we really start getting what we would call business standard. And the ProBook B, obviously coming with all of the commercial design and ruggedness that you'd expect from a commercial notebook, but some of the things you really gain once you bump up to the HP ProBook B series are features like universal docking where you can have the, your, your docking station that not, not just a port replicator, but for example, I'm using a docking station here at my desk where I can take uh, my notebook that has display port and VGA, and now I've got two DVI ports, I've got two display ports, I've got VGA, I've got all of my, my ins and outs, my R, R, RJ45 connector, uh, even an external hard date for an for a external hard drive right there in my docking station. Those are things you can only do when you move up to a ProBook or an EliteBook. And these are proprietary solutions with HP. Yes, our competitors have docking stations and port replicators, but this is something where HP, in my mind, clearly has an advantage over the competition to be able to offer some of these accessories that really make your notebook a desktop-like experience. I think we all want to have that desktop-like experience, but we don't want a desktop anymore. And uh, this is a way to do it, is by adding a docking station. I've got one at home, I've got one at the office, uh, and this is, this is uh, for the cost of these, something that's fantastic. Okay, so we've talked about ProBook B steps up into docking. The other thing ProBook B has is the secondary battery support. Um, if you travel a lot and you need that battery life, this is something you really need to think about. Um, even, even if, I know we've talked about the folio having nine hours, um, one disadvantage to an Ultrabook is you can't have that secondary battery in your bag. Where when you move up to a ProBook B or an elite, book, an elite Book, you can have another battery that actually you can hot swap on your notebook when you're sitting on a flight or in a car or wherever you might be going to have that extra battery life. So when you go to Elite Book P, you get everything we've talked about already and then, and then several other features as well. Um, well. Many of our Elite Books, most of them come with a three-year warranty. Uh, there are some exceptions. The Elite Book has what we call military, uh, military spec testing. So it's, it's passed all these different rigorous tests. It's dropped 26 times. It's baked in an oven up to 160 degrees. Uh, so I don't know if you live in an area uh, like a Phoenix or a Houston, but this is, this is something where it's a real issue. If you leave your, your notebook in the car, and in, in some areas it's not unlikely to get that warm, you can come out with a baked keyboard looking much like bacon, uh, where an Elite Book, will, this will not happen. Uh, under any normal circumstances. It's, it's tested against humidity, against vibration. If you're in a dusty environment, if you're working outdoors, if you're using this thing in your car, um, this is, we're not trying to say this is a Panasonic tough book, but for half the price, and if you don't need your notebook to be run over by a tank, you can save yourself a lot of money by going to an elite book over some of the, the rugged notebooks on the market. And then again, if you bought a, a care pack that maybe covered accidents um, and you have an elite book, you can't really go wrong. Because even if something were to happen to your elite book, where it was damaged, you're covered 100%. If we can't fix it, we'll replace it. Okay, so that, that gets us to the Elite Book. Obviously, the, the Elite Book is our high end. Uh, we have tablets, we have 14 inch, 15 inch, and 12 inch form factors on the Elite Book, depending on the size that you're looking for, and really kind of our flag, flagship product as we look into the Elite line. And I'm sure if, you, if you're, you're reading the newspapers and watching TV, most of our advertising you're gonna see kind of focused around the Elite Book as our, as our premier product. Great. Now, with that, um, I know I kind of gave a brief overview of a lot of products. I wish I had uh, maybe more time to go through each one of these products and get some more pictures. I know the, the core focus of this, this particular webinar was on the Ultrabook. Hopefully, that helped you get a little bit of your, a little bit of your uh, uh, understanding more around what the Ultrabook is, how HP plays into that market. Uh, this is a fantastic launch for HP. You'll continue to see more Ultra Books on our roadmap as we go through 2012, 2013, and appreciate uh, your time today as we talk through uh, this great solution from HP. Thank you.
Great, thanks, Dan. And we do have a few questions here. So, are you are you up for a few? Let's see if we can do it. Okay. Uh, looks like the first one is: Does the HP Folio have a full size keyboard? So it is a full size backlit keyboard. Yes. Okay. And our next question: Does it come with a basic case or a cover? Does not. Um, this is that's a pretty rare thing with a with a commercial notebook to have any sort of a, a case. Um, a simple sleeve for something like this is quite inexpensive, but it does not come with with anything other than the unit, your AC adapter, um, and then just the instructions and warranty information. Okay, thanks. And our next question: uh, This attendee missed part of the specs discussion. So, what type of graphics or video board does the Folio have? Sure, yeah. So, uh, thanks for asking. So, as we look at the, the graphics side, it's an Intel HD 3000 graphics. Uh, it does support two simultaneous displays. Um, I, I've tested this one out actually with a graphics adapter and used up to, to uh, I've, I've, with, there's a 3.0 and a 2.0 USB port and there's HDMI. So, I've used three external displays using the graphics adapters on the USB port and then um, using the HDMI to run the, the graphics off the internal machine, as well as using the internal display. So, but without the graphics adapter, with that HD 3000 graphics from Intel, it can support two simultaneous displays. Okay. And looks like our last question here, unless anyone else has anything else. Uh, you mentioned that the 14-inch screen solution or I'm sorry, you mentioned something about a 14-inch screen solution. Is that available now? I'm assuming this question is asking if there's a 14-inch Ultrabook, and there is not. Today, we only have the 13.3-inch that's available. We do have a 14-inch on our roadmap that is later later this year, uh, like the fourth quarter of this year. So that's that's something that you'll see more from. And, and, and when you see a 14-inch Ultrabook, which is not going to be as common in, in the beginning right now, you'll see more 13-inch. Um, it even looks thinner because it's a, it's a bigger display at a thinner profile. So more to come on that. Okay, thank you. And we do have one more question here. It says, uh, does it have an Ethernet port, the Folio? It does. It does. A lot of times we call that the RJ45 port, and it does have that built into the unit. And I, and I can see the other question here is, does the Folio have a built-in DVD drive? And the answer is no. A lot of times it will be referred to as the optical drive, and it does not have that built in. You would have to use an external USB DVD drive, which is becoming more and more uh, common. And I think I used to kind of back that up. If maybe you got in a little bit late, is with with the Z height of an Ultrabook, there's just really no room to put in um, a DVD, ROM, DVD, RW type of an optical drive. It's it's something that when you, when you give up the weight and um, and really go for that small form factor, uh, other things have got to go, and that's at the top of the list. Okay, great. And then, are there any other questions? Um, <laughs> are, are you giving each one of us who attended this webinar a free folio today? I wish I could do that. You know, I only have one unit myself. I have a hard time tracking these things down. So you are welcome for the fantastic price of nine ninety nine to uh, to work through PC Mall and Mac Mall to do that. Okay, great. And I think that uh, covers our questions today. So thanks, Dan, for a great presentation. It's very informative. Um, I think everyone here enjoyed it. And I uh, just want to thank everyone for attending. As a reminder, this webinar was recorded and it will be posted on our newly designed Business Resource Center at www.macmall.com. I encourage you all to go check it out. And also, I'll be sending it via email later this week. So thanks again, Dan, and thanks, thank everyone. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, thank you. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye, everyone. This uh, event is now over.